Hey everyone, this is an ultimate setup guide for the RG35XX. This channel is dedicated to retro handles, getting them set up, reviews. So if that is something that you're into, please consider subscribing to my channel. Let's get into it. Firstly, the stock versus Garlic OS. So the stock firmware, the firmware that comes with this device runs great. It's a, it's a great firmware. When I did my initial review, it was running all the games that, have, that were loaded onto it very, very well. But after the recent updates with Garlic OS, I'm confident that we are at a point where the user experience plus the performance of Garlic OS is now better than the stock firmware. However, if you are not one for fiddling with flashing SD cards, etc., the stock firmware is perfectly adequate. But at this stage, my official recommendation is to move to Garlic OS as soon as your RG35XX arrives. So what is Garlic OS? Garlic OS is an homage to Onion OS, which is on the uh, MiU Mini, but Garlic OS is far simpler, which is a benefit in my opinion, especially if this device is designed for beginners. And so let's jump straight into it. The first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to install Garlic OS. Firstly, I just wanted to mention that I do have a Garlic OS review video where I look at it in detail. This was before a lot of the recent updates, so I think it will be useful to watch that video and this video sort of as companion pieces to each other. But anything that you can't find about Garlic OS in this video is probably in that other video of mine. So what you will need, you'll need two SD cards, possibly two SD card readers. We're gonna see how that works out later. You'll need a 16 gigabyte card for the operating system and a 64 gigabyte card for the ROMs. And then obviously you're gonna need a computer with a decent internet connection. So the first link I'm gonna need you to click in the description below or in my written notes on my website is to Black Serif's Patreon. So we're gonna scroll down. You can see here his change log. Um, he's made quite a few changes over the past month. And uh, we just scroll down to here. You'll see on the left is copy paste on top of stock. This we're gonna use later to show you how to update Garlic OS. But we wanna download this one, the micro SD card image. So you click on that. While that's downloading, uh, just a note, the link is also in my article on my website. You're gonna need to download 7-zip. Um, so you just go here and you download the latest version of 7-Zip. See, there's also a version for Mac OS. Okay, now that it's downloaded, you just uh, click on the folder or whatever, however your computer works. If you're using a Mac, open it up. And we want to extract this. So now I've already got 7-Zip installed. And if I double click, it's just gonna open that file in 7-Zip. If it doesn't, just um, right click and just say open with 7-Zip. So here I'm just going to click on the garlic image and say extract. And uh, here you'll see where it's going to extract to. So if you wanna change that download folder, you can change it. Mine's gonna to go to my downloads folder, which is, I'm happy with that. So I'm just gonna say, okay. It'd be a good, a good idea just to delete or clear the folder that you're downloading this to so you don't get confused with other files. So for the purpose of this video, I just deleted everything out of my downloads folder. So here you can see my downloads folder. There's the downloaded zipped file and there's the garlic OS image. Okay, the next thing you're gonna to need to do is just download an app called Berliner Etcher. I do believe this also works for Mac. Let's just double check. Download Etcher. Let's see where it's got you. Yeah, so it's Mac OS as well, but we're gonna do the Windows one. Mine's already installed. So you just download this and install this into your computer. So here I'm going to go straight to Berlina Etcher. I'm going to say flash from file. So that's the first step. So now we know um, if, if it doesn't open the downloads folder, just navigate to whichever folder you saved the garlic OS image file to. So obviously mine was in downloads. So I'm in downloads, garlic OS image. It's only gonna pick up on image files. So you just click on the image file and you say open. Now we want to select targets. So Grab your SD card, make sure that no other hard drives are plugged into your computer because you will run the risk of, um, you know, accidentally flashing those, you know, hard drive with all your hard earned files on it. So you want to avoid that. So I'm plugging in the 16 gigabyte card into my computer now. And then you'll see 16 gigabytes. So I know that that's the, the SD card that I just plugged in. So I'm just gonna select it. If there are any other drives, make 100% sure you aren't, you know, flashing those drives. Just say select. So now I'm gonna say flash. So what this is going to do is it's going to put garlic OS 
onto this SD card. So we say flash, say yep. I don't know if that those pop-ups don't seem to come up on my screen recorder, but it just asked me a bunch of questions. So I just said yes. All right, and this is going to take some time, so I'll speed this up in the edit. The next part seems a little pointless, but I learned the hard way that you need this for future updates. When you do update this, it needs this partition to be expanded. So another little tool that I have downloaded is the mini tool partition wizard. So I've put the link in um, my article on my website. So we just open mini tool partition wizard. So this bottom disk three, uh, you'll see there's little fats partition and ext4 partition, another ext4 partitions, Linux partitions, then it's a FAT32 partition. What we want to do is expand this FAT32 partition into the unallocated area. But the only way to do that is to delete it and then make it bigger and then recreate a FAT32 partition. Well, there you can you can try expand it, but you run the risk of losing the information. So the first step that you need to do so go into your browser and just look for, so this, for some reason, it's not showing up the, the names of the partitions here at the moment. But so this is your main drive with all the, the, this is where the operating system is. This is all the information that needs to run Garlic OS. And then just look through the side here, just say, no, we don't want to format anything. Just say cancel. It usually shows the ROMs partition here, but for some reason it's not showing the name. So I've just got to search. So here, this is the ROMs partition. Um, and you'll see the BIOS folder, the CFW, which is the custom firmware folder, and then the ROMs folder. Now we want to retain all this information. And so I'm going to make a little folder on my desktop called uh, Garlic Backup. Okay. And then I'm going to drag and drop all these files into garlic backup. It's not a huge amount of files, so it's quite quick. Once we've backed this up, um, this is just in case when we do the formats, um, when we extend the partition, it, uh, it deletes the information. So we just back that information up. Now we go to the mini tool partition wizard. You'll see here's this FAT32 drive. Uh, this is where the, the ROMs are kept. Um, and we want to extend that drive. So we want to go up here, we right click and we say extend. Now you'll see there's two bits of unallocated space. We want the larger bits that that eight megabytes is actually required. That's this eight megabytes over here. That's required for this whole thing to work. So we want to not do that one. We want to grab this unallocated 11 gigabytes over here. And then we just drag this all the way and we say, yes, we want 11.11 or whatever that size is. If you used a smaller card or a bigger card, um, that number will be different, but you want to use all of that and you say, okay. Now, for some reason it didn't call it ROMs and it's, it, it could confuse you in the future. So just say, okay, give the partition a label ROM so that you know which partition that is. And I'm just going to say, apply. We strongly, blah, blah. blah. Um, just make sure all your other apps are closed. Okay, so now we go back into the Explorer and just to find that ROMs partition now, we've extended it uh, and it looks like everything's remained intact. So we don't have any drama there. That is just something that you have to do. It's a bit of a pain in the ass, but um, it's something you have to do to maintain the integrity of updates and all sorts of things. Okay, so that is done. Okay, so now I'm just gonna eject this card from my computer, get it out here. And uh, I'm going to insert this now into the device and start it up. So I don't have an SD card for the ROMs in right now. I just want to be safe and I just want to make sure that it's booting nicely. Yep, and so there it is. Uh, that is Garlic OS. Uh, there's obviously nothing in you now. There's your retro arch. And that's it. All right, so we're going to switch off and then remove that SD card again. Okay, so now what you want to do is put your 64 gigabytes or whatever you decided to use for your ROMs, plug that into the computer. Then you want to go to mini tool partition wizard again. So if you've got a new card, um, it's going to be formatted to XFAT. Um, so you'll see here's an XFAT partition. That is my new SD card. Um, what we want to do is we want to format that FAT32 and we want to give it the red label ROMs. We say OK. And at the bottom left, all you do is just say apply. And it's going to format that 64 gigabyte card to FAT32. 
Okay, so this is where that little backup we did earlier is actually going to come in handy. So now let's just exit this mini partition with a tool thingy. Um, when I open a Explorer, navigate to your new ROMs drive. Now there's nothing in there. If we open our garlic backup, we can now drag all of this stuff over to here. So now we've created our ROMs SD card that we can put ROMs on. All right, once your ROMs SD card is prepared, now you'll see there's a spot for your BIOS files. So you just open up there and you copy all your BIOS files onto there. Um, if you don't understand BIOS files, on my written article, I've put the table with all the information you need for all the different um, ROMs and what the ROM folders mean. So when you go into ROMs here, um, you'll see all these different folders. Um, it explains which folder is for which type of game. And then it also tells you which BIOS files go according, you know, which BIOS files you need to play all those games. And then you just Google them, find them, and put them in here. And then um, you just drag all your ROMs into the corresponding folders. And again, on my written notes, I explain to you which ROMs go into which folders. And then also just remember, just a top tip, um, Neo Geo, the ROM, sorry, the, the BIOS file needs to go in the Neo Geo folder. So just grab that BIOS file for Neo Geo and pop that into here. That's neogeo.zip. You'll also find a bunch of tips for Garlic OS in my video, my other video for Garlic OS. Um, so go check that one out. And that's it, you're done. Your Garlic OS is set up. Um, but I quickly want to dive into how to update Garlic OS. So remember I said to you, we need to download this particular Garlic OS over here. If you want to update, you click on this Garlic OS, the copy and paste on top of stock. And uh, yeah, let's just wait for it to download. This will open in 7-zip and uh, let's just go back to our downloads folder and delete that other stuff so we don't get confused. So I'm just going to delete all of this and then I'm just going to say extract all of these goodies. All right, so here's all the goodies that we just downloaded. Now let's open another um, Explorer window and we want to go to, so we still have the, the second SD card, the ROMs SD card plugged in. Um, so here it says ROMs, so it's, this is for the ROMs partition. So all these folders need to be copied and pasted over onto here. And so you'll just do that and you'll say replace. So we say replace files in the destination. Yes. Okay, once that's done, I'm actually going to eject this ROMs SD card and we won't need to look at that now for a few seconds. And then I'm going to plug in the smaller SD card, the TF1, with the firmware um, installed on it. Okay, we just say continue without scanning. So that's a good sign. Open up another file explorer. And then just navigate to, so we're going to go back here to my downloads folder. And you'll see it downloaded something called the MISC folder. Now, usually it, it would um, create a partition called MISC, but it hasn't done that now for this installation. But you need to look for this part of the SD card. So it's broken the SD card up into these little partitions. And you have to look for this one where there's modules, charger, RAM disk, all that sort of thing. So now open the MISC folder. And you'll see there's similar things. Um, there's a modules folder. There's a boot logo zip folder. There we go. Um, so we want to just grab all this, copy it over to our small SD card. Now I've noticed recently it's given me this error and I'm not 100% sure why because it's only two megabytes of, of space that it's missing. I'm not sure why it's doing this, but so what I did was I just grabbed everything individually. It might just be an issue with my computer. But if you are having this issue, say replace, and that'll replace the modules. Say do this for all current items. Boom. Then we do the boot logo. Grab that over. Say replace. Say yes. And then let's grab all these. Maybe it'll do these on their own. Grab these over. Oh, I don't know what the deal is with this. Let's grab that one. Replace. Say yes. So I'm just doing all of these individually. Replace. Yep. So here's where it's weird. So I'm going to delete this UL image off the SD card. 
and then drag the new UL image over. Say so yes. I don't know why it's doing that. It's weird. But I've gotten it done. All right, so now we eject. And that was how you update Garlic OS. Bit of a <laughs> workaround there, but we got it done. There should have been significant performance improvements recently, so you should have very little issues all the way from Atari to PS1. You know, the, the recent overclocking has made it possible to put um, filters and shaders and it, it doesn't really hamper the performance that much. The recent updates are what prompted this setup guide because I can now confidently recommend this as a nice looking operating system and an overall easy to use operating system. PlayStation is still only working with .chd files, very important notes. And then MAME 2003, is just the support for that has just been added, so that might be of interest to you. HDMI audio now goes to your TV, so the audio comes out your TV, not out the device, which is nice. And then Black Serif has improved the battery indicator at the top. So, you know, uh, there's a battery indicator here, but he said, he, I think he's, he said he's, he's probably going to struggle to get that perfect. Um, he thinks it's never really going to get it working 100%. Okay, so moving on to album art. Now, I just want to preface this by saying that I'm not a huge fan of how the album art works on here right now. I really like the, the clinical sort of simple look of just the games list. And then, you know, when you are in the recents, it's got these screenshots. I really like that. I really like the way it looks there. But let's take you through the album art setup. If you like it, it's something you can use. All right, so in my notes, if you know the written guide on my website, um, you can go to the link, scraper.net, and you can go to downloads, and you can download your version, which is Windows. Now, it downloads all the stuff you need for this um, onto your computer. So what I would recommend once the download is done, creating a folder somewhere on the, your computer. So you'll see here I've created in my documents, I've created a, a scraper folder. So I've actually made the scraper folder here. And then whatever that gets downloaded to your computer, drag it all into this folder and then scroll down to scraper.ui and double click and it should uh, just load and run on your computer. All right, so this process um, where it's loading here usually takes quite long. Um, I've had this now on my computer, so once it's done, it goes quite quickly. For the sake of time, um, I could load this all on my computer, but it's gonna take incredibly long. It's gonna take, you know, it took me last time like almost 40 minutes for that to load. So what I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tell you what to do. So um, you click on that scraper.ui, then you say, I don't have an account, I don't want to register. Then say, yes, I am sure, and then just wait. Um, I, said, I actually changed this, I, I, I haven't been doing this up until now, but I said select generic emulation. And then I said, select inspect subfolders. And then the next step is to unplug your, your ROMs SD card from your device and then plug it into your computer. So we're gonna do that now. And uh, always just say continue without scanning, otherwise it messes up that partition. And so in that intro phase of using scraper.ui, it's actually going to ask you where to find the ROMs from. Um, so what I'm going to do, we, for this example, I'm going to use um, Game Boy Advance. So I'm going to select Game Boy Advance here, and I'm going to click on here, and then I'm going to navigate. Here's that ROMs partition. Then I'm going to go to ROMs, and I'm going to navigate down to GBA. So that's the folder that we want to use for, for scraping now. So this is where it's going to actually scrape those ROMs and then find the, the matching artwork. Then at the top right, we're gonna say media. Then over here, you wanna say use specific configuration for Game Boy Advance. If you see any other um, artwork here, just select it and then press this minus button, delete it off the, the thing because we don't want to scrape unnecessary stuff. And then I'm using title screens because of how busy this artwork thing gets. Um, usually what I, I, I recommend is this internal mix because it looks really nice with all the little bits and pieces. But for this use case, I'm going to say image and on the right hand side here, um, select title screenshots. It's just simpler and it's going to look cleaner. Um, now we want to select our output folder. So you might recall in the beginning of the video, I said you might need a, an additional SD card reader. So I'm busy using this multi-card reader over here, this transcend one. And so um, I'm using this SD card adapter because it does 
actually have a big SD card slot and a micro SD card slot. So I'm gonna put the firmware card, the card that has my firmware on it, I'm gonna put onto this SD card and I'm gonna plug it into here. I've tested this multiple times. For some reason, the artwork is only reading off my firmware card. I don't know in, in subsequent updates if, it's, if it's, it's going to be corrected, but for now, you need to put the artwork on your firmware card. So this is a little bit confusing, but just to clarify, this is my ROMs SD card. I'm scraping the ROMs from here. So the ROMs that I have, I'm scraping from here and then I'm putting the artwork on here. You see, so uh, that's why I say I, I don't really do this because I feel like it's more trouble than it's worth. But if you really do want artwork, I'm going through this process for the people who want to do this. Okay, so now here is where it gets a little bit tricky. We need to export our, our artwork to the firmware card. And so I've taken the firmware card out of my device and I've plugged it into the computer. Now we just need to confirm because there's two, now two ROMs partitions. There's the ROMs partition from the 64 gigabyte card, the TF2, um, which is this ROMs D. I've, I've checked it's this ROMs D. If I go in here, there are my ROMs. So this is definitely the, the ROMs SD card. Um, where I'm keeping all my all my ROMs. Now I've inserted the, the TF1, the firmware card, so there'll be another ROMs partition. I know it's very confusing, but so here's another ROMs partition, ROMs I. If we double check here, I haven't put any ROMs on my firmware card, there's nothing here. Okay, so that's how we know. Now what we need to do is we need to create an images folder in the GBA folder on the firmware card. Yeah, it is quite um, confusing. Okay, so now we right click, we say new, we say folder, we say IMGS, capital IMGS, we say enter. Now we have created a place to keep our artwork on the firmware card, on TF1, our 16 gigabyte card. Okay, so now we go back here, we want to export our artwork to ROMs I your drive number is going to be different on a computer. So you've just got to confirm that you are using the correct partition for the artwork and for scraping. Go into ROMs. Now we've created the images folder here in the ROMs folder. I say yes. I say OK. And now we are nearly there. Um, I like to say clean up output folder before generating new medias. What it's going to do is delete everything and put my new stuff on there. Um, now I've already selected this, so what you need to do is say resize width to 640, resize height to 480, don't say keep aspect ratio. I don't like to create a games list, especially for this RG35XX, so say no link, store one media per game per ROM, and uh, now we can say play. So I just want to go over that one more time because I know this is a little bit confusing. So on the games front end, we need to select the ROMs partition where we are keeping our ROMs. So that is our external TF2 64 gigabyte card. And we've gone ahead and we've selected GBA for the purposes of this tutorial. Then when we go to media, we need to export to the firmware card, the TF1, our 16 gigabyte card. And so we have made certain that we know that it's the iDrive ROMs GBA images. So once you've confirmed that and you press play, everything should work correctly. So now it's going to scrape and it's going to find your artwork. And let's see if I got that right. We're going to put both SD cards in. So the 16 gig goes over here in the first slot. 64 gig goes into TF2. Let's start it up. Let's have a look. Uh, GBA. Okay, so it worked. So you see after a lot of testing. I tried to put the, the artwork in all sorts of places. It only works on the TF1 card. So you've got to have your ROMs on your external card, but your artwork on the TF1 card. And as you can see, I'm not convinced yet. Uh, I would like, if we are going to do artwork on this OS, I'd like for the artwork to be here and the, the, the games list to be here, or I don't know, some kind of other way of doing it. But I uh, at the moment, I'm not a huge fan. Um, I think it's more trouble than it's worth, to be honest. 
But it is what it is. If you like it, it's there. I've given you now the guide to do it. So it is available. What I want to do next is take you through my system settings. So for each game system, the settings that I recommend for just the nicest look and feel, it's not necessarily for performance, it's just for, you know, the way that I like to tweak my games to look. So let's go through it. Uh, Atari 7800. So I like to turn full screen mode off. So menu X gets you into retro arch. I go back here, I go to settings, I go to video, I go to full screen mode. I like to turn that off. And then I like to do integer scaling on. And um, once you're done with these settings, uh, what you do is you go to overrides. And there's a few little quirks and I'll guide you through it. But for this one, you can say save core overrides. So press A, resume. And as you can see, integer scaling on this. Um, I'm not sure if it is true integer scaling, but it works really nicely. So that's Atari. PC Engine. Let's go into Bonk's Revenge for PC Engine. So menu X to set it. Uh, we go back, we go into settings, we go to video, uh, turn full screen mode off, and scaling, we say integer scaling. Um, I've already tested these, so I'm, you know, kind of just firing through these. Uh, override, say core override, say yes, quick menu, resume, and then it's going to give you that sort of square screen like PC Engine. Okay, so NES, there we go. I tried a little bit of the album art, but it stretches the album art across the whole thing, which again, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a fan anyway. Menu X, we go into settings, we go into video, we say full screen mode off, and then this particularly, I'm really impressed with integer scaling on the screen. Uh, let's just say override, save core overrides. It really looks good. You might have to take my word for it, but uh, it really is scaling this NES very, very well, and it looks exceptional on the screen. There's absolutely no screen tearing, which we've had a problem with in the past with the system. So yeah, I highly recommend integer scaling for NES. Then we go to Sega Master Systems. So we go to Alex the Kid. Most of these you'll notice a trend for um, integer scaling, but Master Systems, I actually just re recommend leaving it in full screen mode. It looks exceptional. It, it really looks really good. If you are into Master Systems, this is from my, my, my day. And uh, yeah, quite enjoy playing Alex the Kid and stuff like that. Okay, this is where I do get quite picky, is Game Boy. So Game Boy, I'm very particular about how I want it to look. And so we say menu and X, and we go into, obviously we're gonna switch full screen mode off. We're gonna go to scaling. We're gonna switch into just scaling on. Go to video filters and we're gonna put a filter on. And the one that I've tested that I really like is Game Boy 3X DMG. There we go. Now it's going to look all crappy and old. <laughs> so I'm going to go to overrides. I'm going to say save content directory overrides. Going to go to resume. There we go. Now it looks sufficiently messed up. <laughs> it just, I like it. I have tested this out. So Game Gear and um, Sega Genesis look really good with integer scaling on, but for some reason, there's a little bit of a glitch between these two platforms. If I mess with integer scaling, they, the screen jumps around and that. So integer scaling is not quite 100% with those two. So I, I would wait on that, but I do recommend integer scaling for those two. I would say leave SNES for now because there, there's been a bunch of weird sort of glitches with SNES. And so I wouldn't mess around with SNES just yet. Um, but I mean, as you can see here, it is looking really good. Um, it kind of looks like integer scaling. It's so nice. Uh, really looks good on the screen. So, you know, if we don't get anything better than this, this is more than acceptable. It's it's really nice. Okay, moving on. And the last system, uh, PS1, um, I just leave full screen on uh, just because oh, it looks nice, you know. So if you want to add gamepad support by plugging a gamepad into the bottom here, I've put instructions on my written article about how to create a wait for USB file with no file extension. So just go check the written article and you'll be able to add gamepad support. So we're going to remove the shoulder button rattle. The guys at Retro Handouts did do a bit of a tutorial on this. Um, but I'm going to do it for the purposes of this video. So you need one of these screwdrivers. I'm not sure of the name of these things, but they're specifically for electronics. Okay, so we just got to take these uh, screws out. There 
You kind of just got to pry it. So I'm just get digging my nails in there and giving it a little tug. Just got to be very careful. I, I'm not sure of like screen ribbons or anything like that. So I'm just being cautious. So there we've got the battery cable running there. Um, I don't think I need to fiddle too much there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a piece of electrical tape on top of here. So just sticking it down. I think it's probably going to wear off over time because what happens is this clip is clipped into here and that's where your rattle comes from. I mean, you could pad, put padding in here and all that sort of thing. And there's probably a bit of a rattle here, but I'm just going to put a couple of pieces of tape here and see what happens. So I just kind of did a rough guess. I'm just going to put it over the ends and then kind of just get it sticky on that section and then hopefully that part isn't going to rattle anymore you know it's creating a bit of dampening there and same story just going to put it there stick it on i'm already re hearing less rattle so aesthetically i now have that so i could have been a bit more careful so maybe in your application you can trim it a little bit so in testing the shake i knocked this uh the power and reset button so I just had to put it back in there. So just be careful of that. That's loose. And I'm guessing the volume button is the same. All right. So I'm not going to fiddle too much around with that. So I'm just going to do that. And I've done a little shake test and it seems like it's already a little bit better. And for my purposes, that is absolutely fine. Just make sure you don't crimp this wire here. You don't want to crush the wire and then break it. And so now we just clip it all back into place. See a bit of a crunch. All right. And I'm going to put the screws back in. Well, the mic is just off camera here. It's right next to it. And if you watched my shake test, uh, you'll know that this was a very rattly device and now it is no longer a rattly device. That actually adds a lot of sort of premium feel to it. So the only sort of review I would give of that is, you know, I, I was maybe rushing a little bit for this video. So I would recommend just trimming it a little bit and, and use, using smaller pieces because all you really need is a bit of stickiness over those little clips. I now have a non shaky device. That is really cool. <laughs> Glad I did that. Okay, and then I'm going to direct you on my written article to a video that Shane Craig made. He picked up on an issue with this D-pad. So I have mentioned in my review of the RG35XX that I'm not 100% satisfied with this D-pad. It, it just doesn't feel natural. It does feel a little bit forced, a bit rigid and, you know, like doing um, fireballs for um, Street Fighter and that sort of thing. It's just not perfect. And he picked up on an issue with old Pokemon games where I think you couldn't do diagonal presses or if you press this way you went up or something. I don't know. I've never done it. But you can go check if you're having the same issue. If you are playing old Pokemon games and the D-pad isn't playing along with you, um, Shane Craig has got a fix for that. I've put a link to his video in my written um, notes. The HDMI port is here and my TV actually has a one-to-one -one pixel rendering and so that works quite nice. It's not all the way to the borders of the TV but it looks quite nice and audio now goes through into a TV. It used to come out this speaker which wasn't ideal but now you get your audio and everything going into your TV so for a device this price to have um, HDMI out is great. Um, the HDMI out works with stock firmware as well but now Garlic OS has that. And then mods. I'm going to put pictures on the screen now while I speak. When I was researching, a Thingiverse file popped up that you can make custom curved buttons up the side here. So I'll put that picture up on the screen now. That has now made its way onto Etsy. So someone, because it's quite a difficult thing to 3D print, you need a, a special resin 3D printer and it has to be very high resolution. That is now up on Etsy. So I would love for someone to buy that and do a little video for us to see what that looks like and how it feels. Um, I'm considering maybe getting it as soon as I get a bit of money from the channel to get that because I think that's a fun little mod. There are other face buttons on Etsy, but they just don't look great. So they're weird colors. So I don't recommend those, but those shoulder buttons, I think are worth a look. So I'll put the link in the description as well. So that's it. I think there's not much more you need to know to set up Garlic OS to get your RG35XX running perfectly. There are one or two small glitches, you know, like the rendering that I showed you for the Sega systems. But overall, just follow this guide, have it up and running like this. And then in a month's time, 
do an update on Garlico is it's going to be really, really great. Um, and it, it, it's, a, it's a quality of life thing. It, it makes your device feel more premium than it actually is. And that I think that is the, the whole benefit of the custom firmware and getting your RG35XX looking and feeling fantastic.